Hola mis amigos y bienvenidos a otro episodio de TCAP Recap. That is right everybody, you just heard your boy TCAP Recap speaking a little bit of the old Espanol. I should be able to speak it a lot better because I studied abroad back in college, first in Madrid for a semester and then Buenos Aires for a semester. So I got decent at it, not fluent, but just okay. I also got mugged in Marseille, France, and mugged again in Buenos Aires, but those are stories for another time, because tonight I have a long-requested Pareto, Mr. Walter Babst. Yes, one of the infamous TCAP teachers, but... Before we plumb these disgusting depths, I do need to give a huge mother clucking shout out to my first patron. That is right, I started up my Patreon just in these last few days because a lot of my videos have been getting deleted from YouTube for allegedly harassment. So if you want to see those videos, I've put them up on my Patreon. You can find me at patreon.com forward slash TCAP recap and it's free because I just want people to enjoy my content at this point. However, there is an option for $3 a month just if you wanted to show your support, help out a little bit. I don't expect anybody to do that, but one real cluck and cool dude did, Mr. Blackula. At least I assume that's what the extras are for. But if I got that wrong, man, please just message me again on Patreon and tell it to me right. Because I want to give this man all my respect. I've never made any money off any of my creative endeavors. This is the first time. So thank you so much, dude. I will not forget it. If you do enjoy my content, just a quick reminder that Finn the One-Eyed Wonder Dog really appreciates when you like this video. And man, does he love it when I get new subscribers. All right, though, let's take a look at this media gem left to us by Mr. Chris Hansen. The video is uploaded by Joey's TCAP channel, and the footage is grainy as hell. I don't know why this is so. I don't blame Joey, obviously, but I guess we just got to deal with it. Trust me when I say that Babs does not need HD clarity to get his emotions across. If you want some go ahead and get Okay. Hey, how are you? Pretty good. Would you have a seat right over there, please? I'm under arrest. No, I want to talk to you. Go ahead, let's see. Take note of how fast Chris moves to strike in this one. This is just another example of his honed instinct, telling him that this Preto is skittish and a possible flight risk. So he moves in quickly to take control of the situation. And poor Babs, the prey, he's so astonished at the turn of events that he actually tries to shake Chris's hand right away. Like, he's just meeting Chris for a parent-teacher conference. To be honest, I should have covered this interrogation sooner because it's a masterclass by Chris Hansen. He hooks and reels in this big fish, using nothing but the power of his words. And Babs fights him every step of the way. You can see the battle of wills playing out in the conversation as Babs tries to find out more information. And Chris tries to keep him talking as long as possible. And boy, does it deliver, because Walter admits some stuff that he really shouldn't have, and it doesn't go well for him. I guess this is a good time to just do a quick bio of Mr. Babs here. He's a 43-year-old teacher who got busted in the Riverside, California sting, and he's part of the pervy little club that went after 12-year-old girls rather than teenagers. By the time he shows up at the house, he has already had a disgustingly graphic chat with the decoy. The two things that stand out are his insistence on not using a condom and his desire to, how to say this, eat his own seed after it's been planted. He says a bunch of other godless and depraved things, including the odd brag that his sexual member is shaped like a can of coke, but we're not going to delve in any further because it's not for the faint of heart. The intrepid reader can find a link to the chat log in the description, and we're just going to continue on with the video. John, John, 
Anyway, go ahead and talk. You know what? No, just sit, sit down. John, what's your last name? Hunter. Hunter. And how old are you? 43. 43. And what are you doing here? Getting my ass kicked. Getting your ass kicked? Yeah. I knew it. I knew I, should, I knew it was a setup. Uh, no, I need you to sit down, please. I need you to just arrest me, take me to jail, and, and execute I me. need to talk to you first. Oh, so uh, he's doing the old trick where he just immediately dives on the grenade, which we've seen other Pretos do to a lesser degree. But Babs here, he goes hard in the paint and demands the bullet. Of course, only one Preto went harder than him, and that would be Louis Conrad, but we shall not talk about that because I want this video to stay up. But let's discuss this strategy a little bit, because something seems off about it, right? We know that Walt said some disgusting things to the decoy already, and made his sexual intentions abundantly clear. And he showed up at the cluckin' house, so clearly he doesn't consider it that bad, or else he wouldn't be doing it. Yeah, he might say, oh, I know it's wrong, I know, I know it's evil, but that's the same way that an alcoholic will say that alcohol is bad for them. Yeah, they might drive drunk all the time and risk other people's lives, and they know that it's wrong, but they're still going to do it, and you can be damn sure they don't think they should be executed for it. No. Walt here, he's expressing extreme pity for himself. He knows what this means. He knows that he's a school teacher. He knows that he's absolutely clucked. So yeah, in that situation, a bullet might sound pretty good. But what he's doing, he's presenting it as if he realizes what he's done is so evil that he needs to be taken out for it. It's like an extreme form of admitting your mistake. I learned a long time ago that fessing up immediately to any mistake you made and immediately trying to make amends for it, people respect that a lot more and incidentally, it often lessens the consequences for you because you're doing the right thing. Not so for Babs here. He actually had the balls to return to his classroom and continue teaching underage students after this sting happened, he had a few days before the school finally found out about his arrest. He didn't go and tell him. He didn't go and fess up to his mistake and immediately try to make things right. He ended up pleading down and getting a better job after he got out of prison as an aerospace engineer, which I'm all about rehabilitation because rehabilitation is what prevents future victims. But... The fact that he went back to the classroom knowing exactly how that would look makes this whole oh shoot me act ring a little false. But enough for me. Let's see how the master handles this. I, you know what? I didn't, I didn't bring anything. I didn't want to do anything. Whatever. Well, why did you come here though? Help me to understand. He was on the sixth side of a I've never done it before. I, I talk about it online all the time. And that is what I like to call a legal kick in the balls because he just screwed himself. He just admitted that he's been engaging in this behavior for a while and that it's been escalating to this point. The police would find 200 lewd photos of the minor variety on his computer and he would actually plead guilty to that charge. So he's been a busy little bee on the internet and it makes it that much more likely that he was engaging in this behavior with actual victims. Hopefully not, but it's a very telling statement. The other thing he self-snitches is that he says he's there because he's one sick son of a fitch, making it clear that he knows perfectly well what he's doing is wrong, and he's doing it anyway. It makes it much harder for him to use the classic Predo defense that he thought the girl was 18 and that they were just role playing and what he's doing is actually totally okay because that's all it is role play now he straight up admits he's a sicko and that's why he's doing it and i just want to point out that he defends himself saying i don't have anything on me but like i said he made it clear in the chat that he doesn't like to wear socks when he knocks boots moving forward though 
I apologize if my audio is a little wonky or inconsistent. It's the butterfly effect. You know, Finn loses an eye and I forget how to record YouTube videos. Speaking of Finn though, the other day I experienced one of the worst side effects that you can possibly experience owning dogs. I took Finn and his big brother, Bodie, who's like four times his size and protects him everywhere we go for a walk in the woods and they found a small rabbit and Bodie must have caught it because I came up on him and they were both sniffing this thing in the ground and it was a rabbit with its neck broken and the two of them didn't know what to do with it. They were both like shocked that they actually managed to catch it. So I had to put it out of its misery as the humane thing to do. Thankfully, broken neck, like, I'm pretty sure it couldn't feel any pain. But rabbits are pretty cute, so it's a little traumatic to put them out of their misery. Yes, it's the circle of life, but anyways, I just had to tell someone because shit was messed up. Let's keep watching. Well, well tell me to understand. What, what, I mean, do you have a, con a compulsion? An addiction to the internet? I'm going to have to stop Chris right there. Sorry for pausing this so much, but I cannot stand when Chris brings up this argument. He always asks these guys, oh, do you have an addiction to the internet? Like that's somehow related to what these guys are doing when they chat up these decoys and show up at the house. And it just blows my mind that Chris keeps on harping about this because it seems extremely obvious, even back then, that there wasn't some innate connection between internet addiction and being a child preto because why would there be a connection between the two of them? Yes, the internet revolutionized the way that they commit their crimes, just like it revolutionized a ton of stuff. But these predos are just making use of what they have. If all they had were letters and the U.S. postal system, they'd be using that. And would Chris ask them if they were addicted to the U.S. Postal Service? No, because it sounds ridiculous. It just seems like he was trying to demonize the internet. And he also gives these guys an excuse, a little bit of an out to be like, Oh, oh yeah, I have an internet addiction. That's why I'm doing this. Not because I am a child preto who is dangerous. Just a big lapse in Chris's normally very astute observations. I'll let him slide on it, though, of course. Yeah, okay. I've never done anything with anybody except my wife. Ever. No. Who, who are you going to see? I don't even know. And you know what? I'm going to ask you something. Right or arrest? You're not right now, no. But I need to ask you some more questions. Okay. Now, you would hear, no, 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 I want you to say Very, very good question to ask. And you can see him getting up, getting ready to go. Because if he's not under arrest, he doesn't want to sit here in this kitchen and get grilled by some guy that he doesn't know. Please, I need, I need to go. Can I go? I want to talk to you a little bit more first. Please just sit down. Would you like some water? No, I, I, I just, I'm about to puke. That Preto pullback was smooth like a lubed up slippery slide. Chris is, above all, non-threatening and friendly, making it seem like he just wants to know what's going on. He just wants the explanation and still treating Babs like he's a guest, offering him water because he realizes that just like most people, his prey wants to explain himself, even if it's just to lie. He wants to make himself look like a good guy in this situation, and he's already thrown up a bunch of excuses about only doing stuff with his wife, ever. So Chris is able to lure him back in just by asking for more of those explanations. Hey buddy, maybe if you just explain this well enough, we can chalk this up to a learning experience and let you go. Cops take advantage of this impulse all the time, so it's something that's associated with authority because it reinforces the fact that Chris needs an explanation and Babs really should give one or at least a better one than what he's already given. So let's see if he can come up with anything better. You were talking to a girl named Babs. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. You know what? I don't know. You, you and know you know how old? No. What did her profile say? 
Her profile said, I'm, I'm in trouble. The profile said she was home. She said uh, 12 or 13. 12 or 13. Okay. So you know you were coming here for a 12 or 13 over. No, I don't. I, the profile said 12 or 13. I, my profile says 39. People, if you put it on there, it's kind of a fantasy thing. Okay, so back on familiar ground here. This is a very common tactic, a very common explanation. As David Schumacher says, two words, role play, chat room. Babs already kind of alluded to this earlier, so it makes sense that he would go with the role play defense, but he's already cut his own argument off at the knees by acting so damn guilty. Why behave this way if you're just doing some consensual role play with somebody? Why call yourself a sick son of a Quidditch? Why is he acting so guilty? Because he knows he was there to do something wrong. And this is why you're supposed to get a lawyer if you're going to be talking to the police about something that might get you in trouble. Of course, Chris is not the police, so Babs could just get up and leave, but the same principles apply. Chris does this all the time, so he's seasoned, not nervous, he knows what he's doing, whereas Babs, this is the first time, and for a lot of people, it's their first time being questioned by the police, and they're freaking out, they're nervous, they're saying incriminating things, and the scary thing is that there's plenty of times where innocent people said incriminating things that got them hemmed up simply because they were freaking out and nervous. So yeah, if you're ever talking to police and you think, do I need a lawyer for this? You need a lawyer for that. I, I, I'm totally, I'm totally screwed. I know that. But it, it's, forget it. What are you doing here on a Saturday morning, coming into a house where you believe a 12 or 13 year old kid is home alone with no parents here? Do you have kids? Yeah, I do. Well, how would you feel if some guy I would, is yeah, I, 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 into your house trying to hook up with your kids? I feel pissed. What do you do for a living? I'm in education. You're an education. Oh, he does not want to admit that he's a teacher, which makes sense. He knows better than anybody the position of trust that a teacher has in a community. And just like a great teacher can make your life better, a teacher like this could ruin your life. Everybody's going to wonder if he was doing it to the kids, how long it's been going on. It's going to be a lot more scrutinized which makes it all the more unbelievable that he was able to bounce back from this and get such a good high paying job. It just speaks to money talks, right? He has the education and the know how to do something that is making somebody a lot of money. So, hey, look past it. Don't forget that the laws only really apply to the 99%, right? If you're one of the really wealthy, you just kind of do what you want, and the law looks the other way. Look no further than the coronation yesterday. Prince Andrew was there in all his royal attire, and he was deeply involved with a guy whose name rhymes with Hefri Schmepstein. But what can you do? That's just late-stage capitalism for you, where you can buy yourself a not-guilty verdict. A teacher. Mm -hmm. What grade do you teach? High school. High school. And you talk about this in your chat. Please, please. Sit I, I, I won't go anywhere. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to go to jail. But I need you just to stay by the desk there, please. What are you wearing at the moment? My boxers and tank top. I sleep I don't. Please don't read it. I know what it says. And then you said this, John. Is that appropriate anyway? You know, that's against the law right there. Is it? To transmit that to somebody who you think is underage? Yes. Yeah, I didn't transmit it, though. Did? No, I didn't. Who? Boy, ladies and gentlemen, that was a close one. Everything was getting a little too much for Babs, so he stood up like he was getting ready to bolt on out of there. But Chris just had to reassert himself like a boss or more like a cop. Either way, it got Babs to rethink his decision. And instead, he just walked the whole thing off like you would do when you stubbed your toe or slammed your shin. And everything's just a little too much, too much pain for the moment. You walk it off and just hope nothing's broken. That's what he's trying to do. Little does he know he's coming back to face the worst part of the interrogation, which just happens to be the part that Chris seems to enjoy the most. Chris's quarry wrote a lot of nasty smut to somebody he thought was 12 years old. And when he realizes that Chris has that chat log, 
and is going to start reading them back out to him. He starts to break down. It's the most painful thing that Chris can do in that moment. Nobody wants to hear their own sexting read back to them, especially by a strange man in a strange house. But the fact that the recipient was 12, while these two are both grown men, makes it so infinitely shameful. It's the chat logs that get these guys in trouble, so... Oh, my mother chair won't stop squeaking, and it's driving me f***ing nuts. <sighs> anyway, this is super painful for the Preto, so let's watch. I didn't transmit that to her. You did not. No, that's on. I think it's online. Under I like how he turns the paper sideways a few times, as if that's going to change the meaning of the words written on there, which he damn well knows what they are. Profile. You didn't transmit this. Not that I. No, honestly, I don't think that I did. Please just keep your hands out of your pockets. There's nothing in there. May I ask who you, you see wanted? my pick? In the chat window. Yeah. Yeah, but you think you would like that in you? How big is it? Well, you saw. Go get a can of Coke. Daniel. Oh, there it is. The can of Coke. The famous can of Coke comment. <laughs> yes, Babs is proud of his Coke can shaped sexual appendage, which all the ladies know is the best kind of sexual appendage. You can see the effect that these words are having on Babs. He's getting much more agitated. He's standing up. He's pressing Chris for answers as to who he is. It's actually going to lead to the end of the interaction here pretty soon. But that's why Chris saves it for the end. He knows that it's kind of like cocaine. It's a short, intense, fleeting high. So he starts dishing out the best one-liners you can find for TV, knowing that it's going to break the Preto. But there's no way that he wasn't going to find a way to work that can of Coke comment in there somehow. That was his coup de gras. Keep in mind that all the shame he feels right now is because he's being exposed to a single other person. Let's see how he reacts when he finds out that he's actually being exposed to the nation. A little yes at first. Now, what, am I, what conclusion am I supposed to draw here, John? I can't say anything. I'm done. I'm fried. Well, there's, there's, please arrest me. There's, 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 just, there's one thing you got to know first. Is that I'm Chris Hansen with Dayline NBC, and we're doing a show on your computer pad. Now, if there's anything else you'd like to say to explain yourself, we'd like to hear it. If not, obviously, you're free to go. Hot dog. I don't think this was even in the realm of possibility for him. He was at a police sting and going to jail, not being exposed on a national news network by Chris Hansen. In the end, Chris Hansen got this guy dead to rights, and he had no excuses. He showed up at this house to do obscene things with a 12-year-old girl, and he did his time, his wife never left him, and now he's got a good job somewhere. But during the interrogation, he was smart enough to see exactly where everything was going. And so he experienced a lot more fear than one of the more unintelligent Predos might experience. You know, guys like Jerry Martin Kosis or Donald Morrison, who didn't really seem to grasp how serious the situation was at all until they were getting arrested. All right, that is the end of the analysis. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. It means so much to me. It's so cool to have an audience that enjoys my content. So thank you. I will be going to San Francisco next weekend. So unfortunately, my next episode won't be out until the week after. But as always, let me know what you think what you want to see. I think I might get into analyzing some Law & Order SVU episodes. We'll see. But until then, I hope this video finds you well, and I will catch you on the flip side.